Hello, this is Deborah Barrett with the Cincinnati State Physics Department presenting the fifth in a series of recordings on momentum. This video will review the solution for a problem which is based on a problem from Giancoli's physics but which we are going to amend slightly. The problem we're going to base ourselves on is chapter 7, problem 3, and since the first step in solving a problem is always to read the problem, that will be our first move. I suggest that in addition to me reading it, that you read it also. This problem is on page 188. As written, the problem says a 0.145 kilogram baseball pitched at 39 meter per second is hit on a horizontal line drive straight back toward the pitcher at 52 meter per second. If the contact time between bat and ball is 3 times 10 to the negative third seconds, calculate the average force between the ball and bat during contact. The way we're going to amend this problem is we're going to imagine that this is an old baseball, so old and worn that some of the cover vaporizes when the ball is hit, that 20 grams of the cover is just gone. So that will, of course, change things a little bit. In addition, we are going to look for the impulse on the ball as well as finding the average force between the ball and bat during contact. So here's our problem statement and we want to review the information from chapter 7. We have momentum being conserved whenever any unbalanced outside force is much less than impact force and best to be using when you're considering a motion change for more than one object. Well, in this problem, we have a bat and a ball. The bat is changing its motion some, but it has a very large outside force on it. The ball is also changing its motion quite a bit, and because it's being hit by a bat, it has a very large outside force on it. So we can only use conservation of momentum for the bat and the ball if we consider them jointly as part of a system. However, that's not going to work because there's this big force on the bat from the batter who's holding it and applying a large force. So the system is not isolated and therefore conservation of momentum is not a good approach. On the other hand, the impulse is best to use if you're focusing on the motion change of just one object and it's also indicated if you're dealing with force or time. The problem only asks about the final um, or only gives information about the motion of the ball and it asks about the force between the ball and the bat which means that since we're focusing on just the motion change of the one object and we are dealing with force, impulse is a good option. If the mass of the ball stayed constant, we would also have an option to use the approach that the sum of the forces equals the mass times the acceleration. Notice that our traditional statement of Newton's second law is valid and useful if the mass of the object stays constant. But since a chunk of the ball's mass is going to be vaporized, then that is no longer going to be a valid approach. So we are left with coming at this by saying impulse equals force times time interval equals change in momentum. We won't be able to find the impulse by taking the force multiplied by the time interval because we don't know the force yet. But we can find the impulse by saying that the impulse must equal the change in the momentum of the ball. We have enough information to find that change in momentum, so that will be our game plan. So 
here's the relationship I'm going to use. Impulse equals force times time interval equals delta P equals momentum at time 2 minus momentum at time 1. And, of course, momentum is defined as mass times velocity. I'm overdue for my sketch here, so let's make the sketch. So here's my equate. I've taken each of the pieces of information in the problem statement and marked them into the sketch in the appropriate place. I have the mass of the ball at time 1 is 0.145 kilograms, and the velocity of the ball at time 1 is 39 meter per second. I have the mass of the ball at time 2 is 0.125 kilograms, and the velocity at time 2 is 52 meter per second. And I have that the duration that the force lasts is 0 0.003 seconds. So I've completed my equate, and I've chosen my equation, and I know that I want to say the impulse equals the change in momentum, since I can't find it directly not having the force. So my impulse will equal momentum at time 2 minus momentum at time 1. So let's put that. So impulse equals momentum at time 2 minus momentum at time 1. And I want to remember to take into account directionality because these are all vectors. Well, not the time, but everything else is a vector. All right, since momentum is defined as mass times velocity, the momentum at time 2 is the mass at time 2, which is 0.125 kilograms, times the velocity at time 2, which is 52 meters per second. And then we have to subtract the momentum at time 1, so we take the mass at time 1, which is 0.125. 4, 5 kilograms times the velocity at time 1, which is 39 meters per second. I almost did this backwards. One of my favorite ways to foul these up is to zone out and put the momentum at time 1 where I need to put the momentum at time 2. I actually have another error here. I would like you to pause the video for a minute and think about what the other thing is that we are overlooking. Did you realize we forgot to put in the directionality? We have velocity at time 1 and time 2 are in opposite directions, but we never incorporated that. Some people like to incorporate that way up here as soon as we do the equating to avoid forgetting it later. Other people say, well, I'm not worried about forgetting that. I'll just insert it straight into the fill-in line and it'll be fine. Either way, you need to put that negative in there because in this problem, the directionality is purely given in a positive and negative direction. We don't have to worry about compass points, but we do have to worry about positive and negative. Please notice if I use the 52 meters per second as negative, that means I am choosing our very popular approach, which is positive to the right. Next, I'm going to do the button punching, and then we will have our impulse. This is the unit for doing momentum, kilogram meter per second. Please notice this is not identical to a Newton, since a Newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. The momentum unit is not the same as the Newton, and the momentum unit does not have a nice tidy name. Continuing with the numbering, or the numbers, uh, I have a subtraction next from my formula, and then 0.145 times 39 is 5.655. Again, kilogram meter per second. So this is equal to our impulse. And that means we have an impulse that's negative 6.5 together with 5.655, both negative. That gives us a negative 12.155 kilogram meter per second. Now, 
because impulse is defined as force multiplied by the time interval, it's kind of non-standard to give that in units of kilogram meter per second. So I'd like to show you how we get to the standard. Since the standard unit for impulse would be force in newtons times time interval in seconds, the standard unit would be newton seconds. And what I want to show you is because a newton is defined as a kilogram meter per second squared, and we're multiplying that by another second. So as you can see, when we do this, these seconds will cancel with one of these seconds, and we wind up with kilogram meter per second, which means that the unit that we have here of kilogram meter per second is the exact same thing as a newton second. So we're going to present this impulse as a negative 12 point, let's see, probably 5 sig figs is too much. We'll present it as negative 12.2 newton seconds. Since we found that impulse by taking the momentum change of the ball, then this impulse is the combined effect of the force and time on the ball. That's why we've got the negative 12.2 newton seconds, because it's looking at what has happened to the ball, and that negative means that the impulse was in the same direction as the final momentum. The momentum first went down to zero and then went back out again in the other direction, so that impulse was acting to the left. Now, the problem actually asked us for the force on the ball, so we need to find that also. Since impulse equals force times time interval, and we now know the impulse, and we had the time interval, I can take the impulse definition, solve it for the force, and be ready to find the force. So I'm going to divide both sides by the time interval. That will give me force equals impulse divided by the time interval. So I'll have a negative 12.2 newton seconds divided by a time interval of 0 0.003 seconds. Using the unrounded version, I get a negative 4052, basically, newtons, because the seconds divide out. This tells us that the force on the ball is in the leftward direction which isn't surprising at all, since we would expect if a ball comes into the right and goes back to the left, that there was a force acting on it towards the left. Plus, that's the way we sketched it. Thank you for joining me for this sample problem using impulse equals change in momentum.